Benzinga here in Miami, Florida. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day outside. It's a beautiful day inside. Dimitri Downing from Meet Unshackled here with co-host for this Mita. Oh, wait. I can't hear. I can't. George Township, Pure 5. Faster, there. better, and safer extraction. Faster, safer, and better extraction. I like it. And George is a buddy from Arizona. We're getting him warmed up to the podcast uh, thing. I want him. I, I got to pass the baton at some point in my life, so I'm hoping he'll be able to, George. We have a really cool and honored to have him. He's, he's kind of known throughout the entire cannabis space, and we grabbed him from the Benzinga crowd. R.W. Navis, one of the leading, if not the leading, uh, I, you were humble enough to say one of the leading, I would say the leading cannabis executive recruiter out there in the cannabis space. How are you doing? Great. Great, How's, great to be with you. How, and, and, and founder of the Canapac, too, and we're going to get into the Canapac. One of your projects in the second year. Uh -huh. But what are you finding at Benzinga? Well, it's a very well attended show. It's uh, when you look out here, the booths are packed. Uh, I would say all in all, it's uh, looking like another success. Yeah, I I'm impressed. You know, last uh, I was here last year and it was about the same crowd. I thought there'd be a little bit of downturn because of the economy and people are a little concerned about investment. But it seems to be pretty pop, pretty popping. Yeah, and, and actually the uh, inclement weather outside is probably better uh, uh, if you have a booth here because there's nothing else to do except network here. Ah, good thinking. It didn't cross my mind. Everybody's forced inside because it's <laughs> that's, rainy. That's right. If, yeah. if not, you might be on the beach in Miami. That's right. I, that, that's really in interesting. Yeah. So our, our, I, I always say Ray, but are you, a, you prefer RW? Uh, Raymond. Raymond, yeah. 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 But exactly. you, okay. So um, how did you start in the cannabis space? Uh, what's your, tell us about your journey, how you got in. Well, I got in about eight years ago. Um, probably got in, I, I never had anything against cannabis. I've, I've been a part-time user for a long time. Um, I thought it was going to be a big deal, and I started uh, going to conferences. I, I initially started through the media side, uh, writing about the, the conferences, writing about the events, and... As I went to more and more conferences, I realized that there was a, uh, a need for a more sophisticated executive recruiting. Um, and so I made a beeline for that pretty quick. But I started, got started on the kind of the media side. And uh, I'm in California, uh, based in California, and cannabis is very popular in California. So, And, 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 that, and that, that's great. Why executive recruiting? Why did you focus in on that? I've been an executive recruiter my entire adult life and, uh -huh. and, and my father before me. The key to success in the cannabis industry, and one of the reasons why your business and your presence has blown up the cannabis industry, is because, and my father before me. Yeah. So he's got like generational expertise, brings in this knowledge into the cannabis space, exactly like George in extraction, who's extracting yeah. uh, flowers for 25 years. You guys bring in this knowledge and you apply it to cannabis, and boom, everybody, you know, you're the expert suddenly. I, yeah. That's the best way to go if you can. Is, yeah. is get in there, what do you, what are you good at? Bring it into the cannabis world. Right. That's what you do with extraction, right? Exactly. I heard that uh, first five people you hire uh, really make the success of your business. Absolutely. Do you really find good people in the cannabis industry, skilled people with experience? It's a new industry. How you build experience in this industry? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's... Um, it, look, the, the best, it's best if you can find someone with cannabis experience. It doesn't always happen. So you try to get someone maybe who's had a, a training with a big company or a school or what have you, and then also they've been with at least one startup. Coming out of a big corporate environment right into cannabis is a very difficult move. Um, so that's what I prefer to, to, to do in my executive recruiting. Now, there are some situations where it does work. If you're uh, on the financial side, a controller, a CFO, that's a pretty standard position. Um, there are some nuances in cannabis, but that that kind of a move works. Often it doesn't work. Um, but um, maybe I could. Did I answer that question for you? That, that was a tough yeah, question. Absolutely. It was a good answer. Uh, uh, I was like, yeah, I was, I was, that, good question, George. He, yeah. He, he's the intelligent one well, of the well, two I could of go us. on and on about that, about you know how to find the right person. But uh, that, that's a, a, a simplified uh, uh, thing. And I think you look, a trained executive recruiter, can look at someone's background and can probably talk to him for five or ten minutes right. and figure out whether he's a good candidate or not. And, and you work with candidates and companies, correct? Uh, yes. I, I primarily, I don't take on a, a let's say, now we're thinking about doing something in this regard, but I don't necessarily take on a candidate and go spend time to find them a company. 
we generally work for companies that come to us and they say, we need this. Okay. And we handle everything in the cannabis industry that pays, let's say, 75000 on up to CEO. So a cannabis company comes to you is looking for a certain thing. Uh, is it the secret sauce and you can't talk about it, how you find them? But well, and, and the reason I'm asking is because people want to, there's a lot of people that uh, that uh, want to be candidates. You know, they, say they don't know what to do, you know, maybe go on LinkedIn or stuff. But how do you find your candidates? Is that? Well, LinkedIn is a lot of it. Uh, also, you know, I, I come, I've been to so many of these shows. I think getting out there and meeting people is very important. So you have a Rolodex of like. Exactly. Yeah, I've I've uh, I've been good doing this now for eight years. Been to just about uh, you and I. We've been to just about every single cannabis show there is, and uh, over the years you get a, f- a good rapport with people, and they say, "Hey, so and so." You'll get information from people that you can't get all all the time from LinkedIn. Yeah, no, that, that that's a- that's absolutely amazing. And and your father was an executive group yes, too. Yes, he was. That's, yeah. So you have like, yeah, oh yeah, he was. Uh, they sold his company to Corn Ferry in New York, and um, he knew the founders of Corn Ferry very well. Then he moved to Los Angeles and started his, his own executive recruiting company. And what what, so. what a great move. And if somebody yeah. wants to be an executive recruiter, they can tuck themselves under your apprentice wing <laughs> There we become go. become an executive recruiter? Yeah. We, we, have, well, we have a small uh, boutique firm. We have uh, five people in our firm. We're different than our competitors. I think many of our competitors are really staffing companies. Mm-hmm. They're not really executive recruiters. Yeah. And the difference is an executive recruiter actually goes and gets your candidate. You might get them from a, another company, one of your competitors. Um, whereas staffing companies look on a job board and they wait to see who comes to them for the position. Very different approach. And, and I think, if look, if you're a company and you're trying to win, who do you want to hire? Let's say it's for your VP of sales. You want to hire somebody who's looking because maybe they're not doing well at another company? Or do you want me to go get one of your competitors? Mm-hmm. It's a, kind of a no-brainer. So uh, numbers-wise, you must be working with quite a number of companies and individuals uh, in, in, over, the, over the years. I noticed that you created something called Canapac just to kind of bring them all together. Correct. I, wish, I, I love that. Mm-hmm. I, I, I love gathering. I love communities. I love events. Uh, tell us about all these people that you met, all these companies you work with. I imagine they're part of the Canapac. Yeah. What is the Canapac project? All right. Well, Canapac started about, uh, well, a little more than two years ago. It really started, the origins of it would have been during COVID. And we, I, during COVID, I was not really happy with all the webinars that were being produced. I thought that we could do something a little more interesting. And so we started with a Zoom call. Yeah, um, the Zoom and call. And it was much more interactive. That was the difference. People, we didn't let anyone talk for more than a couple minutes and then we'd have questions and interaction, and that made it more lively. People stayed involved, and then as soon as we could, we went live. Uh, with and we went, we met. Our first one was in Oakland, and we've been back and forth between Northern and Southern California. We've been to Arizona, we've been to New York, Miami, Chicago, Washington D.C. Uh, we're going to go to Boston this summer um, uh, here in Miami. Uh, so it, the 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 thesis is to put. A group of decision makers together so a lot of the cannabis events that have been held through the years um, charge you quite a bit of money to attend and I think a, a, a problem with that is that oftentimes you're not getting the operators who are running a cultivation running a manufacturing company you get flooded with service providers attorneys people selling lighting people um, uh, insurance and what have you so at the Canapac, we are primarily just for operators okay. of, of businesses. And then, we, you know, if we have vendors, they're probably a sponsor. So there's, there's no charge to attend. It's an invite only. Um, but we try to really get the decision makers together. And decision makers like to talk to one another. How do people find out about Canapac? What's the best way to... Well, we have a website. It's called thecanapac.com. C A N N A P A C dot com. The well, Canapac dot com. We'll see if we have time to digital edit to digitally edit that on here. Okay. Sometimes it happens. Um, okay, so 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 Scanapac, is that a, like a, a nod to like Frank Sinatra? Like, yeah, exactly. You, I was I was I mean uh, I'm not that old, but you know it was the origins are definitely from the rat pack. But I couldn't quite I was actually gonna call it the Canna Rat Pack, but that 
you know, most people don't even know. We're just old guys like you. The, I'm not. Know. I'm not that old, but I know this. I mean, Frank <laughs> Sinatra, Sammy exactly. Davis Jr., the whole yeah. Rat Pack. Yeah. Did you? Did you? Is a lot of people know that? No. Not really? other people. Maybe a few people in the very beginning know that I was toying around with that. But yeah. I think I'm just highly educated. I'm just kidding. Exactly. No, I have a weird sort of cultural experience. My dad did a pretty good job. Got not shout out to my dad, and mom. They good people. Really good people. Yeah. Um. So excellent. So the next can of pack is here, of course, uh, in Miami. But this will be broadcast next week. So the next can of pack meeting after next week towards the end of April, May, will be in. Uh, well, we'll have something at Hall of Flowers in Santa Rosa, New York, as well, right? Um, I'm not sure MJ about New York. We may do something smaller in New York. There's mm-hmm. there's an awful lot of events going on around MJ Impact, and we we don't want to get swallowed up by everything else. Yeah, we, it's a, really a freestanding type of an event. Yeah, we were thinking about doing something for Mita, but New York's so complicated to have big events in and stuff. It's just like yeah, I was just like, yeah. Yeah, this is a mess. We may, we may, do, we may go to New York at a different time. Okay. Than MJ Unpacked and, and do an event. But you will do something to be at Hall Flowers. Benzinga, I like Benzinga because Benzinga is is a very sophisticated group. It's 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 kind of our group. Um, it's 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 what I'm looking for. A lot of a lot of our sponsors are looking for decision makers. So kind of we like to do something. Kind of people. Yeah, we like to do something around Benzinga. Yeah, definitely yeah. a lot of. I, I see investors, owners, C suite. I see a lot of that kind of here at Benzinga, and uh, you know me, I'm a man of the people. I'm, I'm, I'm from the from the cultivation. I'm from seed to sale. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the whole thing. Yeah. So, George, any questions about Canapac or or executive recruiting? Well, this is a small industry. There are probably below 160 thousand licenses out there, and. Um, people doing uh, this in this business so literally picking the right guys it's going to be interchange in between the companies you are right sometimes you can find a better person in the competition and um, i value what you're doing guys and this is the right thing to do in this industry it's make or break for your company hiring the right people and you know uh, some people and i encourage all my, my clients look if you can find the person yourself do it exhaust your network and you know, come to me as a second option. Or you, they come to me if they're in a hurry, if they can't fill the position themselves. Um, but I would also tell you that my fee is really miniature in terms of if you make a mistake hiring the wrong person. The, what you would have spent for me is a small insurance policy that you get the right person. And uh, I mean, if you're hiring a person that, that can affect the bottom line of your company by millions of dollars, you don't really care about a small recruiting fee. Absolutely. So the lesson is, if you're not in raise Rolodex, get into his Rolodex. If you're not using raise Rolodex, ask him politely, and maybe he will work with you and let you use his Rolodex. Or, or, if, or if you just want to come to Canapac and hang out and do your thing, you can do Canapac, right? Exactly. That, yeah. That's and, and, and has we some, have fun. We, we, has there's some no good wine. No pressure. No no strings attached. Yes. Um, everybody has fun, and, and but they meet a lot of people and they do business together. And and and, and that's the beauty. I love I love what you did there. I, it's fantastic. It's one of the reasons why you created Mita, because you know there's, I help people all day long on one on one basis, but there's only so many people you can help, you know. And then so we just created Mita so we can just help themselves, and uh, and you get good wine <clears throat> at, at Canapac. If if you ever at a Canapac thing. You'll see Ray. He he is. I don't know why, where your wine knowledge came from. Mine is embarrassingly limited, but he always has a display full of wonderful wine to share with his uh, friends that come. We yeah, we try to keep it up. And, and I would say I'm pleased to be on your show. Uh, those who don't know, Dimitri is a legend in the cannabis industry. <laughs> He's been at every event that I've been at, and probably hundreds more that I don't go to. I like to be out there. You know. Uh, yeah. When I when the prohibition ended, and I started to learn, I immediately started to go to events where people were doing business around cannabis, and I found it. But one of the coolest things about prohibition was ending prohibition was that people who uh, were doing business in cannabis were now networking, accessible, transparent, wanting to be out front. And and I in the '90s I did my share of little things with pot and stuff, and, you know, inappropriate. We won't talk about it too much, but uh, I know that world and I prosecuted that world too. So seeing the transparent, accountable public world, everybody here is here because of marijuana, which is just amazing. And that's one of the reasons why I love these events so much, because it's such a such a change from, from that. But Ray, we've really appreciated you. Any closing thoughts to the audience? 
Um, no, I would encourage them to, to take a look at Benzinga. And they, they have an event uh, coming up in Chicago. Um, it, it'll be in, I think, September. Uh, I think they do a, a really, really good job. They do. And uh, and I think that uh, MJ BizCon is going to get better and better. I've met the new people that are running MJ BizCon, and they, they're very sharp. And I, I look for improvements there. And and um, just stay uh, plugged in to uh, Mita. Thank uh, you. And Canapac. You and, bet. And, uh, and definitely, we will see you at Canapac. Is, is the event tonight? Or? Tonight. Tonight, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. See you tonight at Canapac. And we will see you at Hall Flowers as well. And thank you for being on our show. Good deal. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. This has been another episode of Meet Unshackled. Shackle.